Hi, I'm Andrew Conway and welcome to IPA Update. As our members would know, the IPA has been in discussions with the Institute of Financial Accountants in the UK in relation to an amalgamation to form the IPA Group, which would become the world's largest SME, SMP focused accountancy organisation. I'm delighted to advise that the IPA's amalgamation with the Institute of Financial Accountants has been formally approved by the IFA members earlier today. This is a world first and positions the IPA group as the leader in the global profession in the SME and SMP space. We receive resounding support of IFA members with more than 96% of votes cast in favour and the amalgamation contracts were exchanged a short time ago. The formal completion date of the transaction will be the 31st of December this year. The amalgamation required the approval of the IFA members as the IFA Council sought the authority from its members to approve the transfer of all assets and undertakings to the new IPA subsidiary. The new IPA group will have more than 35,000 members and students globally. This will provide extensive enhancements for the more than 26,000 IPA members and students and corresponding benefits to the more than 9,000 IFA members and students. The IPA group will be based on the principle of one member, two institutes and three key benefits. The autonomy and brands of each institute will be preserved and provide the foundation of a stronger, more powerful voice for our members and the sector globally. The three key benefits will result in greater efficiency, greater effectiveness and greater member value. Importantly, the IFA will benefit from building on its progress over recent years, which have prepared it for this exciting next phase of its development. This has included building the professionalism of the IFA through obtaining full membership of the International Federation of Accountants. This amalgamation will, will deliver enhanced member support through cutting edge ICT infrastructure, which capitalises on the extensive IPA investment in our platforms. Our members will benefit from greater global reach and influence and an expanded membership pathway. Members of the IPA will be provided IFA designations at no additional cost and vice versa. The day-to-day -day operation of the IFA will be on a business as usual basis. And as a reminder, background information to this union to form the IPA group can be found at publicaccountants.org.au forward slash one plus two plus three. And any inquiries can be directed to marketing at publicaccountants.org.au. The 2014 National Congress was recently held at the Hunter Valley and was another amazing event. With over 450 attendees with 20 sponsors, the National Congress is the premier public accounting event of the year in Australia. Following an opening address by the newly appointed IPA National President and Chair of the Board, Wendy Legal, FIPA, the Honourable Nicola Roxon, Chairman of the Accountants Professional and Ethical Standards Board, provided a very informative keynote opening presentation on the role of the APSB and the importance of maintaining current information and knowledge about professional and ethical obligations. Delegates were given an opportunity to hear from a range of very interesting and informative presentations from leaders in their respective fields, such as, of course, finance guru and IPA regular Noel Whittaker AM, Ian Taylor, the chairman of the Tax Practitioners Board, Dr Craig Latham, the Deputy Australian Small Business Commissioner, Dr Michael Shaper, the Deputy Chair of the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, Neil Olson, the Second Commissioner of Taxation at the Australian Taxation Office, amongst many others. The IPA National Congress is renowned for its wonderful partner program and social events and this year was really no exception. The Friday night night market not only provided delegates and their partners with a relaxed and enjoyable environment, but also as part of our very strong I Love Small Biz campaign, we provided more than 30 local small businesses with the opportunity to promote their wares. On the Saturday night, Guests were invited to the IPA Country Hoedown 
where they were treated with line dances, with whip cracking exhibitions, and an amazing band that kept them on the dance floor all night. Now you have an opportunity to attend the 2015 event. The 2015 IPA National Congress will be held at the beautiful Sheraton Mirage on the Gold Coast. The last two congresses have been sold out very early, so make sure you get in early to reserve your spot and to take advantage of the early bird rate. For more information or to register, please visit publicaccountants.org.au forward slash National Congress 2015 or click on the link below and be sure to check out all the wonderful footage from this year's Congress on our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash IPA Accountants. And speaking of Congresses, the IPA had a very strong presence at the World Congress of Accountants in Rome. This is held every four years. And we were very honoured to recently have the opportunity to present on the state of the global accounting profession at the World Congress. To be able to promote the IPA to the world amongst many other IFAC member bodies at this prestigious event was unbelievable. And the response that we got from accountants was overwhelming. Almost 200 delegates rushed to the IPA exhibition to join up. To listen to my presentation at the session entitled Perspectives of Member Body CEOs at the World Congress of Accountants, please click on the link at the end of this update. Well, 2014 has been a very busy year for government reviews and submissions, including, of course, the financial systems inquiry known as the Murray Review and the competition policy review known as the Harper Review. These are all in addition to the IPA's landmark policy paper, the Australian Small Business White Paper, which will be finalised early in 2015. The IPA made five submissions to these two reviews, the Financial Systems Inquiry and the Competition Review. With respect to the Competition Policy Review, the IPA considered three main parts of the legislation which are of major concern to small businesses and SMEs. These are the sections relating to unconscionable conduct, unfair contract terms and section 46, misuse of market power. For instance, we believe that the existing provisions do not adequately protect small or medium sized businesses from being the victims of price gouging or price squeezes. That is when dealing with suppliers or customers who have superior bargaining power, being forced to pay or accept an unfair price in certain situations. We also recommended that the misuse of market power provisions should be amended to protect small and medium sized businesses. This would mean changes so that a corporation with a substantial degree of market power cannot take advantage of that power if the effect or likely effect would be to substantially lessen competition in that or any other market. Our recommendations to the Murray Review included changes to superannuation to provide greater incentives for self-funding of retirement. And we also provided uh, recommendations around access to finance for small business. This was informed by research undertaken by Deakin University, which found an overwhelming reliance on bank finance and a need to develop other competitive sources of finance if small business is to grow and prosper in Australia. Finally, from all of us at the IPA, We'd like to thank you for your ongoing support and wish you and your families a very safe and happy festive season and a very happy new year. Remember to subscribe to the IPA YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button on your screen now and to stay in touch with the IPA through our website, publicaccountants.org.au, our digital hub, pubact.org.au, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter at IPA Accountants. I'm Andrew Conway, we'll see you in 2015.